Welcome to Beans and Breakdowns, a podcast dedicated to bridging the gap between specialty coffee and the heavy music community. On this episode, I'm joined by Julia, vocalist for the band Deadbolt. So grab a fresh cup of coffee and wake the fuck up! What's going on, Caffeinated Crew? On this episode, I'm joined by Julia, who's become a friend of mine, I would say, from all the shows we've played together and and having me pester everybody at Balance making cold brew. So how are you this morning? I am good. I, of course, the minute we start, I get a phone call, but I just declined <laughs> it. Okay. <laughs> um, I I am good. I, I just woke up and I have coffee in hand. So nice. Ready to go. Yes, I also have coffee. I woke up um, a little rougher than usual this morning and remembered that I didn't have a coffee to use this morning. Oh, so shit. I had to go to uh, Cafe Leo down the street and get something tasty. But where is that? Oh, it's on um, Barry closest. It's in between St. Catherine and Rene Levesque <laughs> on Barry. Oh, okay. Nice. It's like an art gallery, coffee shop. It's a Zab. I think Zab opened it maybe or oh, like nice. help them open. Um, yeah. But well, we can get more into that. I just want to know what you're drinking first. Um, I am drinking some Brazil. <laughs> From my work. <laughs> Brazil, Brazil. Just the medium roast one. Um, it's the one I drink all the time in the morning because it's just so lovely. Um, you've probably had it before. I've had it on espresso before. Oh, nice. But I've never had it on drip. I don't usually, this is a bad thing to say. I don't usually drink Brazilian coffees. I know that there are ones out there though, that are mm. ones that I would enjoy. I just haven't found them. Yeah. This one, it's just like, it's really like, it's really smooth, but still like very like full tasting and just like, I don't know. When customers ask me about it, I'm like, it's gourmand because it's so caramelly. <laughs> but <laughs> decadent. Yeah, it, it it really is. But mocha pot, delicious. Iced coffee out of this, delicious. Like a nice Brazilian it's just like cold never... brew would be cool, I think. Oh yeah. yeah. It's just like always so it's very consistent. Mm -hmm. Like Tom does the same damn thing every time. So I'm just like, shout out. Tom. Yeah. 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 The boy he's a uh, <laughs> man. He really like, <laughs> I, I don't know how he does it. He will, he's been coming in at like three in the morning to roast. And I'm like, are, are, are you okay? You know, but he has, he has like two kids now, right? Or he has like a kid. Yeah. And... He has two. two. Yeah. Yep. So maybe he just goes to bed earlier because of the kids and then wakes up. I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I admire it, but I'm also like, yeah, oh, it's three in the, it's three in the morning. <laughs> Get some sleep, I big dog. <laughs> I think maybe he just like, I don't know, the customers being like, hey, how's it going? What you doing today? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's that. Because <laughs> whenever they notice that he's in, they're all, like all over him. <laughs> I don't think he likes that. I think that's why he started roasting. And this is not like a talk about Tom episode, but. No, my bad. He's just <laughs> such a, he's just such a complex creature to me <laughs> like he's so yeah. quiet but he's also like you know you can tell he's like calculating 
but also he doesn't like people. Like every time I come in to like do something, he it's such it, he hates it. And I can tell. <laughs> like I can yeah. tell he, he does not want me to be there. Yeah, um, he likes he likes to look at his little graphs and look at his Magic the Gathering tournaments, and that's it. But I'm a big fan. I'm a big Tom fan, and I'm not talking about <laughs> Blink. I'm talking about balance I- roasting. He he does the damn thing every time, roasted to he perfection. He really does. Yeah. Like, man, the Lipton, the Lipton one that we got. Oh, the Dominican right uh, coffee. Yeah. Damn, it's so good. I have a bag I haven't even opened because I haven't figured out what I want to do with it. Nice. I need to Yeah, we're going to have it for like about a month still, so. But I need the new... There's a new anaerobic one that y'all have from Colombia that I haven't. Tr- the like, geisha. Oh. Is it a geisha? The, it's a Colombia geisha, so it's like propagated or whatever. But it's good. I don't know, I don't know if that's because one time Daniel gave me a bag, just a random bag, and said Colombia fancy on it, and then fancy Colombia. Yeah, that's that okay. one. Okay. Yeah, it's um, it's really more on the tropical side. I would say it was very, most of the customers are kind of like, they look at it at the back and they're like, I'm going to take the one that says caramel strawberry on it instead. (laughs) And I'm like, you don't know what you're missing out on. (laughs) Just try it. It's $30, but just take it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like, I don't know. Actually, we're still selling it as like basic micro lot. So what i gotta get over there at that price point yeah i think we have some i don't know anyways um I'll tell there's you some left but okay yeah <laughs> i remember the batch was very small yeah um when we got the order in i sent you a picture from the deadbolt account because i was like yeah grace is <laughs> gonna want to see this one <laughs> I remember because when I started, when I was like, let's do an episode, I saw the picture again. I was like, it was that? That was what it was? So Yeah. Yeah. What you um, got there? What is, what is confite? Confiture or confit? Oh, like, well, there's an S at the end. Confite? Like plural. Yeah. Huh. Um, like a jelly of some okay. kind? Okay, so the notes. This is, I drink Zab not frequently. Okay. Uh, I respect the game that yeah. they do. Yeah. Um, and I get emails from them all the time, so it's annoying. But um, <laughs> this is their holiday blend. And I'm a big sucker for holiday blends because they usually have nice little graphics. And this one yeah. is Frosty Le Bonhomme. Oh my god. It's amazing. The label's really cute. Yes. And this is their holiday blend, like I said. Uh, it has orange confit, dark chocolate, and some like winter spice notes. Um, nice. So I only bought it because I thought it was cute. <laughs> it was nice. like, should I, should I get the natural Colombian or should I get this Frosty the Snowman looking motherfucker? I like that. Yeah. He he looks uh He's also like home. orange, orange and chocolate is such a classic like Christmas yeah. vibe. That was Do uh, you like those yes orange chocolate things? Yes, that's exactly where I was going. It makes me nice. think of Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very that's that's a very like coated flavor combo, you know. <laughs> like you see those little oranges at the store, and you're like, "Damn, Christmas is really soon." <laughs> yeah, whenever the pharma pre starts putting them on like that front shelf thing, yes, you're exactly. like, "Okay, you have determined for us that it is the holiday season." <laughs> yep, when they're probably that, already out. They are. Consider- They've been out yeah. for like two weeks. I'm like, it's not even American Thanksgiving yet. <laughs> dog like you can't you can't put the tree up before american thanksgiving yeah they just like i think they just ignore that they're like well we don't celebrate that 
So we're Canadians. On to the next. <laughs> we're from Quebec. We don't celebrate any of those holidays. Yeah, even even Canadian Thanksgiving is not that uh, celebrated he- here. Like, I've learned. Are you a uh, like because you're a barista? Everybody listening, yes. Julia Julia baristas. You probably get like a shift drink when you get in. Yes. What's that shift drink every time? Um, whole milk latte with a touch of maple syrup. Whole milk. And then I. Yeah, dog. And I try to drink it fast enough so that it doesn't get cold. <laughs> but there's always a rush at like <laughs> noon 15. I get in at like noon and then yeah. like 15 minutes in, there's a rush. And then I don't finish my latte and then it's like lukewarm. And then I yeah. still drink it anyway because it's good. But yeah. Make a maple, uh, make a maple macchiato. You can just throw it. Oh, yeah. That would be good. Like a shooter? I, yeah. I'm a fan of the maple cortado also. Usually, like, when the when the homies, like, will come by or visit, I'll just be like, and they don't know what they want, I'll just be like, I'm making you something nice. Something nice. I still can't do a little design on the cortado i've been trying but the physics is hard so yeah it's it's yeah it's like it's too mixy yeah and it's like the espresso is still a little too thick and you don't want to swirl it all the way because the whole cup is just gonna get dirty (laughs) and it just looks looks unclean and kind of like i don't know yeah people are gonna be like what the hell yeah it's (laughs) i've been actually using the bigger pitcher though lately and i've been getting more accuracy surprisingly because the one that we always use for dairy is like one of those like the pitcher with the little lip on the outside kind of yeah yeah yes but it it's good for the one where it's like the blobs and then you pull it through, but then mm-hmm. for like actual, like the wiggly guys, the bigger one with the round, uh, spout is better. Which one's better for writing these nuts? <laughs> I used a stir stick for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I was like, there's, there's no way <laughs> I just like, Oh man. Did Someone Daniel was... see it though? Cause I feel like he would laugh so hard. I did show it to him and I, I only got a chuckle, but I think, uh, I don't know. He, he had just gone to his mechanic and they tried to rip him off. So he was okay, having yeah. a bit of a bad not, day. Not happy. But... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the amount of, of jokes we made when we played in that band together, like it was oh, yeah. constant. I feel like he's like the one true appreciator of that. Yeah. Yeah. I like when I'm sometimes he'll come by and like, uh, he'll like sit in the back and I'll just be like serving people. And then he's like watching Instagram reels with like the volume turned all the way up, all the way up. (laughs) (laughs) There's just like profanity and like loud music. So, yeah, we love Dan. Truly an old man. And, and yeah, yeah, he's just <laughs> going through. So we, everybody at Balance, lots of love, lots of, lots of good times. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I know that when we like met or first talked like about coffee, it was, you were working at like second cup. Yeah. That was bad. Do you have like just a genuine horror story? Uh, It's either the one where I got robbed or (laughs) the one where these two like teenage girls were like, 
This is kind of sad. I believe they got roofied or something. Oh, no. Because they were, like, passed out in the store. And, like, one of them threw up all over the bathroom. Or they just, like, went halfsies on, like, their first bottle of vodka or something. But it was, like, bad. Like, they were passed out. And there was, like, vomit on the floor and the entrance. And, like, this is the middle of downtown, too. So, like, there's all these people coming in and out, like, all day long. And, like, obviously, like, all of us are, like, half trained. Like, we don't know what to do when that kind of thing happens and me personally i'm like i'm not cleaning that shit up i would like i would like call i texted my manager and i was like uh i'm not qualified to clean that up because that is bodily it's a biohazard yeah um i'm not doing that I'm not qualified for that. You can call in a cleanup person. And she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> also like, half trained. Yeah. I mean, she was my age. And <clears throat> yeah, it's, yeah. Great business and then, model. Like I watched an old man get beat up in the back alleyway. Yeah, it was bad. Downtown was crazy during pandemic, like, and like this, well, I think it was like a drug dealer or something, but he was like, he was like pushing him around and like hitting him. And I was like, I was just standing there with like on my smoke break. Cause I still smoked ciggies back then. And I was like, man, this is like, <laughs> you didn't say any, did he see you watching? He saw me and then he was like, he, he, he kind of didn't care. It's like, he, they like went further down the alleyway, but like still well within my sight. I was like, man, it's, <laughs> uh, it just grinds down your soul working down there. Yeah. Like, especially when like, the stores would close, but then we would stay open like late. And like, by the time I was finished working there, I would finish my closes at like one in the morning. Fuck. So the Metro would be finished and I would either have to take the night bus or Dixie home. Mm -hmm. It was just, oh, Scary. that was, yeah. My sleep schedule was fucked my i was sad all the time because <laughs> i was just like see all this like crazy shit and wouldn't be it like you can't do anything about it right and like yeah, yeah had yeah i had my phone stolen and my tips stolen somebody came in and just took the tips that was the yeah, he like tricked me too, so I felt really stupid after. It was so like anyways, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rob me and make me feel stupid. Yeah. Like I'd like to think I'm not gullible, but I I do like to think the best of people, mm. but you know, obviously that was not uh, the move. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a mask and a hoodie on, so there was no way that, no chance in the hell that I was gonna get that back. So. Cop comes in. What what did he look like? He was wearing a mask and a hoodie. Okay, see yeah. you. Have a nice day. <laughs> I was alone on the floor too. Oh shit! In that big two story cafe, and no one else was there i was the closer i literally just closed early and went home i was like it's unsafe for me to keep working if i have like the store didn't have a phone either what? so um yeah there was literally we had a, a doordash ipad <laughs> but you can't use the internet on those because they make them so you can only use the DoorDash app and like the settings and that's it. Awesome. So yeah, 
Just call DoorDash uh, customer support. Be like, can you please call my phone? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, truly working in corporate chain coffee is not for the faint of heart. Not if you take coffee seriously, you know, like yeah. it, it's just going to suck all the love that you have for it out from you. Yeah. And like all my coworkers were like either like people that were students or like 16 year olds that their parents made them get a job. So they don't care. <laughs> They're pouring the espresso straight into that plastic cup. You know? Oh no, that's not good. Yeah. They're kind of just making the things willy nilly. They're not counting how many pumps they're putting in like <laughs> there's mold in the ice machine like it's so bad okay it's so nasty People don't go to second cup <laughs> yeah i mean their beans are shit anyway so yeah. it's like what are you gonna do don't go yeah go to <laughs> literally any other coffee shop <laughs> literally Just don't go there Go to Starbucks. Don't go to Second Cup. It's, it's not good. It's like a smoothie shop with but coffee But don't go drinks. to Starbucks anymore either, you know? Yes. Yeah. It's... Also, don't go to Starbucks. As, <laughs> if we don't. Needed, as if we needed more reasons not to go. Exactly. So, um, yeah. Corporate coffee is stupid. Yeah, never again. And it's like, I've never... Like currently in this, at this job, like I've, I've never made more money in coffee than this. And the people are wonderful. Like Verdun is super loyal, you know? They, they are. Cause so, it's like a small little town inside of a city. Yes. And they will just come like day after day, like sometimes multiple times a day. And you always know what they want. Like it's once you get into the groove of it, like you just know people's orders and you don't even have to ask. And then mm. it's just like, let's have a pleasant conversation instead of talk about what you're getting today. So it's pretty nice. And like, I, I like scooping the beans in the bags because it sounds cool. So, <laughs> you know, it does sound cool. That's why at the little stupid intro that to the podcast is like beans yeah. being poured into a hopper. Yeah. I recorded that sound. <laughs> nice. You did the Foley. I did the, I did. I was like in my kitchen doing the Foley. I'm like, this sounds amazing. <laughs> That's great. Like, I think I recorded it with my phone. I mean, it just like, it's like those rain sticks. Yes. It's like a naptic, like, it gives you the tinglies. Yeah. yeah. ASMR bean. <laughs> Coffee ASMR. So I know that your background in music is like a little different than. I feel like a lot of people that come on because it's like, I heard Nirvana, not to say that that's bad, but like <laughs> <laughs> Nirvana is fucking awesome. I'm not shitting on anybody's music journey, uh, but uh, you sing in like a hardcore punk band. Yeah. Um, but you come from like skinhead before hardcore. Yeah. So I guess, and yeah. I know that like you, you did classically, you did like classical music stuff too. Yeah. So like, and I, I guess give me that low. Give me your origin. The timeline. Story. Yeah. The timeline. Okay. Um. Well, my dad put me on to L seven when I was around twelve. Um, because they were. I mean, L seven is pretty classic, but they. You know, I will take the time to describe that they were like an all woman grunge band. And they had some fucking riffs. <laughs> and I was like, this is so sick. And like, I liked more like mainstream stuff too, you know, like Tumblr stuff. 
like wait you know tumblr stuff as in like give me an example like mcr and stuff oh okay so like post myspace yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah um so started there and then but yeah i was kind of getting on to the punk thing through like my dad's recommendations because he um he was in la he was living in la in the 80s and so he got to see a lot of like early stuff like black flag and dead kennedys and stuff like that do you get to see x because that would be sick he loves X and he did see them. Like X and once. Fear, I would say in that era, they were like the yeah. sickest bands. And like, yeah, he was really into that thing. And he wasn't like, I don't know. He wasn't wearing no like painted jacket or anything, but <laughs> no spikies you know, or he studs. hung around. Yeah. <laughs> That's such an LA thing too. Like, he's just going to everything he's just like he's kind of just there um <laughs> and like he loves deadbolt <laughs> which is great it's sick i mean it's, um, it's it's got that vibe though i feel like yeah and then my mom was she grew up in quebec city and she was a she was a glam metal person so she liked Molly Crew and like Def Leppard and Scorpions and all that good stuff. So she put me onto that stuff too. So I kind of had these two like influences on me early on. And then um, I met Liam of Offset uh when we were like 12 or 13 in an extracurricular uh drama club amazing yeah um and he was wearing a slipknot shirt so i was like okay we're friends now <laughs> done <laughs> you know and uh yeah I that was my first exposure to like DIY local stuff because they would do shows and whenever I could I would go out and see them because no all ages venues except for uh, a, a, a dubious place down by the tracks <laughs> as we all know so yeah it's yeah. a travesty yeah uh yeah like piranha bar was very strict on like you can't be in here and i'm like but my friends are underage also and they get to play here make it make sense but i don't know Were so you weren't around during like the on rock days that was too far for me oh you weren't like a west islander no no i grew up in ndg okay That's yeah right. um we only yeah like liam and i only met on the off chance because we like this drama thing was in the west island okay. but like um like my dad would drive me out there kind of thing but like it was we were, I don't know. There's no way when you're like that age, yeah. like the thought of taking the train and taking the bus or whatever, it's like, at least for me, that wasn't like part of my brain yet, you know? Right. Yeah. Sometimes that's... I feel like my free will didn't develop until like <laughs> later on. But, um, Catch, catching Ubers, $50 Ubers to on rock for the DG. <laughs> at 12 years old uh but yeah so like i would say around like yeah 14 15 was probably when i went to my first like diy show or at least like a local gig 
and then <clears throat> um was listening to a lot of metal in high school because okay. that was like what i what was the most accessible to me um and but i always loved l7 and like how like angry they were and like <laughs> how riff centric they were and uh eventually and then like there was the death grips craze yes. of like like 2014 15 you know yeah and that was a weird time yeah but I, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, the Offset guys were all listening to, like, a ton of, like, Odd Future and, like, yeah. you know, The Body and stuff. So The Body. It was, trash like... Trash Talk was huge at that time, too. Like, yeah, that was what Trash Hardcore Talk, was. too. That was probably, like... Yeah. That's probably, like, the first, like, hardcore band I heard back then mm -hmm. like proper hardcore proper you know but um but yeah and then like you know 2017 rolls around i started seizure there were a lot of like folk punks at the time that was like right i mean montreal always has folk punks yeah at any given time but like it's folk everything here in quebec you have folk metal folk punk yep. just folk music in general is like in those yeah. in, the, in the regions yeah i mean it's i yeah it's like close to Ke quebecois traditional music so i think <laughs> people have this kind of like built-in like nostalgia thing where they're mm -hmm. like oh i like this and um Yeah, I remember we waited a long time outside of Catacombs to get into a Days and Days show, which was absolutely brutal. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then because of that, I was still kind of like, I haven't really found anything that really like clicked with me still at that time. And then I, then when I started getting in, more interested in like politics, that's when I met some like skins for the first time and got into that. And it was cool. Cause like, because I was I was more into the punk side of things at that time, you know? And, like, mm -hmm. some of these bands that I was listening to, I was like, oh, that's oi. I didn't know that. Because <laughs> when you don't know, it's all the same. It's like, all the same, you know? yeah. Like, street punk is... And oi are very, like, you know... As you know, it's it's fairly hard to differentiate the two if you're not in the subculture you know? and also if you're not like if you can't see the people in the band because like yeah whether yeah, they exactly. have hair or not is a determining factor <laughs> yeah and then sometimes they have they'll have like one bald person and then <laughs> three long hairs or something like that and then you're like huh <laughs> like like but, uh like chubby from the chisel has like a ponytail but he's a skinhead and i'm like this is weird he's just he's just a rocker i i've never seen chubby or the chisel irl however uh chubby was at the last new york hounds show and he was on stage with his Burberry scarf or whatever. <laughs> and he was yelling the whole time. It was it was a beautiful sight. There was like there was like 20 people standing on stage that yeah. day. 
um but that was yeah anyways um to go back to the tale i was saying weaving um, spinning throughout all that time i did classical singing in choir in school because uh i switched to an art centered high school like halfway through and um so we did like classical singing and i also learned guitar started that pretty early on as well and then i was still playing a bit of piano um and when i was around so like after getting into the oi scene i I obviously really liked the music. I loved reggae and ska and I was just like, oh, let me just like try to find a ska band. And I did join a ska project for a while. And um, I was like 18, I think. And we never did a show or anything maybe they did shows after but i i I quit after like six months because i was like we're only learning covers and i don't know i was just kind of going through it and i was like i felt really i felt like a child compared to the other people in the band and it was really cool because it was like all like queer and like women and like it was a really cool project but i just like yeah, I was a fresh 18 and then the youngest person other than me was like 26. So okay, yeah. <laughs> it was like, I don't know. Like, I feel like in the subculture, like you can very easily gel with anybody, like no matter their age. But like when you're that young and maybe you don't click with like older people right away and you're Mm -hmm. in a band with them. It's like, you kind of feel like the odd one out. So yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, just continued listening to music and doing other bald person stuff. (laughs) And then, um, pandemic hit and me and Ludo were kind of like the only ones, the only young kids like holding it down. And then, yeah. uh, and then after the pandemic, that's when I met Seb and I saw him at the category show and he was wearing that, the category under the bridge show in october that one like that first hardcore show hardcore is back okay yeah that's the one that one (laughs) i love that flyer um (laughs) but yeah it was like category and like i think one of carl's bands private hell yeah Uh, that's a great yep and And instep yeah yep yep there you go instep was dope Um, i wish they would come back yeah i just saw seb with that gasm painted leather jacket and i was like and he had long hair and a mustache and i was like this dude's a rocker really. <laughs> <laughs> and uh or i think i had, oh no i had seen him before at like this outdoor show in the middle of the summer at like Parc des Royaux. and with um feed Mm -hmm. and one other band and he was there and uh we're the only ones like goofing around in the pit with like ludo and like Jaden and shit and like it was just like a whole thing and then uh, i swear this is going somewhere (laughs) beton army at cgep du vieux montreal um he was there again and i was like 
I didn't come with Ludo that time. I was on my own and I was just like, yo, I kind of just like weaseled my way into that hangout <laughs> afterward. Cause I was like, I'm still partying, but like, I, ain't no one there to party with. Um, <laughs> and then we started talking about hardcore and then we realized we liked the same thing. So I was like, I like Warzone. You like Warzone? He was like, yeah. And I was like, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> And then, yeah, we were jamming a couple weeks later. That's how it that's how it all began. So did so. they already have, like, shit written before? Because I know that, like, Seb and Ryan have been in bands together for, like, since they were, like, born. Yeah. Um, well, Jaden and Seb were playing practicing together a lot during the pandemic and Jaden mm -hmm. learned how to play drums and he was a really good like he was more like a metal drummer if yeah. I'm being real but he's a hard hitter too he was very proficient for not a long time of playing which was cool and they had a couple they had a couple like ideas or whatever but like um I know that they did like they did cut the rope or maybe that was with a different drummer but I think Seb did that with Ryan that was with Ryan yeah and then was Jaden the drummer though I, I don't can't think remember so. anyways to make the long story short they did cut the rope and then I think like that was maybe the basis for the first songs that we wrote. The first song we wrote was Prowl. And uh, after that, we wrote YOA and then Pulling Strings and then Natural Born Hater. I love Natural so Born that Hater. Was, like, it's it's uh it's honestly like a classic at this point <laughs> yeah it is it's so fun <laughs> yeah it's uh it's hard to perform to be honest because <laughs> it's like so fast it's and then sometimes yeah at least there's like a chill moment after the chorus but then, like, I'm legally obligated to two stuff, so it, there is no break, actually. <laughs> Let me pause on speaking real fast and uh, do a physical activity and then go back to it. I kind of just goof around. Like, I don't try to, like, time anything, but I also, like, just, I don't know. I just like, I'm just grooving. Yeah. I'm just like doing silly moves. And like, if they hit, they hit. If they don't, too bad. <laughs> I'm the one up here. <laughs> not <laughs> not y'all. Start your own so, band. If you don't like it, start your own band. Yeah, seriously. So. Simple was. What? simple what? as oh sorry i thought you said some like s something else never mind i won't I simple won't plan yes <laughs> montreal royalty fuck those guys <laughs> <laughs> not um, good people but <laughs> i didn't know that yeah we don't have to talk about that okay that was fine <laughs> not trying to ruffle no feathers um yeah know how much they are loved by listeners of this podcast which i don't know i don't know if that's true um self-title just came yeah. out yeah like yes uh, sir it's it's good so this is my take on it we, we were just at the release show i feared for my life it was so, <laughs> so much fun i saw yeah john donnelly physically moved around uh yo by the crowd. that's crazy <laughs> yeah it was hilarious um very very scary show um so i will say the demo very very in line with like 
the the hardcore influenced punk this new shit is like if you took like almost like seven like late 70s rock yeah and then put like your vocals over it it's yeah. riffing it's like dirty down yeah. long hair yeah. i don't know why seb chose now to cut his hair because the long hair riffing is like it's there oh yeah it really has that like you know that like coordinated bump that yeah like ccr style yeah yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't know if you're talking about the riff and stranglehold. The like, there's dance, one where like, dance, 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 dance. but then there's also <laughs> one where it's like both uh Seb and Ryan do like a run up together, like where it's like down, 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 down. oh, the feel the rhythm, yeah, one? feel the rhythm yeah. is like it's a it bangs, like it's just crazy, <laughs> yeah. I mean. Honestly, like the when Deadbolt chills as a band, we're not listening to hardcore. We're listening to like, yeah, like straight up rock, <laughs> straight up dad shit. But it's Rockin'. it's a good time because like I don't know, just passing the booth around. You know, <laughs> got like Free Bird in the back or some dumb shit or the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, we all love, like, straight-up rocker stuff, and I think that, like, blending that in with the zillion other references and little bits and things that are in the EP, like, just made it really unique and really, like, fun. Because, like, yeah, I want to have fun. I want to, like, I want to talk my shit but I also want to have fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, y'all basically took like potentially very like political and outspoken music, but then yeah. like are delivering it in something that you can not mo- like dance, like just straight up dance to, which yeah. is cool. I feel like yeah. a lot of people, like I don't see a lot of bands doing it, but I feel like the wave of like hardcore is going to like a more kind of dancey, like maybe less tough but like you know yeah i mean i think we're nearing the end of the beat down revival um in the sense that (laughs) yeah (laughs) in the sense that like um it's kind of like shifting i would like to see a shift towards a youth crew revival you know because that's yeah i think that's it's just like it's more fun it's a little more like positive i think people need a little more again i love to talk my shit i love to write my mean little quips but (laughs) i i also want people to like have a more like positive like experience when it comes to just like go to the gig you boogie down you have fun like you don't care if your moves are perfectly executed or like on the you know it's just like i went to uh something to talk about in philly and those kids like they do not care about mosh style or like you know granted that was it's more of a hardcore punk mm-hmm. uh fest but like they're like pogoing yeah. they're running around they're jumping off stuff it's like it's it's very like when you watch like old cbgb's footage and they're just like doing whatever like that's what they're doing and i think that that's very cool same thing with uh newfoundland Like those kids are just like, just going at it. There's no, (laughs) no thought put into it at all. And I think that that's kind of like, like, you know, I like, I I love doing the spin move. Spin move is like one of my favorites to pull, but like, 
like I, I love to like time that good and like be like, oh yeah, I really I really did at that time. <laughs> but there's something to be said for the kind of like chaotic, unstructured, totally like I don't care what I look like right now mm-hmm. kind of style. And yeah, I think that and I want people to move during the fast parts. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's like that's an affliction that uh we unfortunately have sometimes, you know? Yeah. Cause I remember when um when I was going to like truly hardcore shows, the there was not really like it was kind of a youth crew revival at the time, but it was more yeah. like like bands like Mongoloids, uh Backtrack was like obviously really big at the time, which they had that. Yeah. They had that like early New York vibe, but brought yeah. some like some groove to it. Yeah, definitely. But it was all about like positive moshing and like yeah. nobody was really <laughs> crowd killing. And if they did, then yeah. they basically got thrown out. Um, which this is ironic coming from me. Um yeah. but like <laughs> but like everybody mosh like that nobody wanted breakdowns. Everybody yeah. just wanted like fast parts that you could like back and forth to side to side. Yeah. Two step. Yeah. So when Wildside came uh, like a few months back, that mm-hmm. just like totally reminded me of like when I started going to shows and like the fun, like kind of like youth crew, like positive message style where yeah. like everybody's in the pit, everybody's two stepping. Yeah. Like there's like back. And it's forth. just like a fun time. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like I, trying I to like, like beat the that. shit out of anybody. Like you're basically yeah. <laughs> all there together, like having fun, which uh, I do miss that. Like I, I feel like it's very easy for hardcore to go negative. Yeah. Uh, especially when like the lyrics are always pretty charged and like aggressive in general. Yeah. Yeah. But then like when you bring in like that whole fight dynamic, I think there's a time and a place like it's fun. Yeah. Sometimes. But not yeah. every fucking band has to be, you know, the most violent band. Yeah. Um, Which Judge is one of the scariest bands ever. And I don't yes. think I have a single breakdown. So <laughs> uh, it's it's interesting to like see the shifts in the subculture, like as time goes on, because, you know, I've been going to local shows for a minute and in very different niches also. And like Mm. seeing how that all kind of has evolved and like, you know, who's doing what, what kind of, what's the vibes, you know, (laughs) like, cause oi shows are very like, there's some, like push moshing there's some kind of like i guess more hardcore dancey kind of stuff going on but it's also mainly just we put our arms up and we sing along yeah and that's a very positive thing to me like it's very like it's very much about like I'm here with all my friends and we're singing the song together and we know all the lyrics because it's cool. It's pop punk. Off me. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the cool version of pop punk. Oh, don't even say that, dog. I'm, I'm gonna go there. Cause it's <laughs> that's crazy. Like, what is pop punk? Sing alongs pointing. You just finger point and sing along, right? <laughs> but at an oi show, you have your beer, you throw your beer can, you put your arms around your friends and you wait for the woe woes. Yeah. <laughs> or the yeah the loy loys and the yeah oi, oi, yeah oi. yeah i appreciate the the like camaraderie of yeah. oi music and i wish that hardcore had a like a teensy bit more of that and like whenever someone covers like an anthem people do that which yeah. i love i yeah I just like, and you know, there's, there's always like, you know, like Seb and Ryan picking each other up and like fling, flinging each other around and stuff. Like, 
Yeah. Stuff like that. Favorite, one of my favorite things I think I've seen is at the Casa, like Bruiserweight playing at Casa, and you go back and you watch JC's footage of it, and there's a point where Seb decides to stage dive, but he doesn't stage dive onto anybody. He literally just front flips off the stage, landing on the floor on his back. Oh my just God, like, this guy. Up, jumped to nobody. Like, just flipped <laughs> onto the floor like a maniac. <laughs> it was amazing. I can't remember. Uh, did Prowl, there was a Prowl show at Floof's semi recently yeah it was with um with the band from france with rough ground yeah yeah was prowl headlining that i think they did wait was that who else played that it was them rough ground i can't remember who else played that show was did gav i thought an ontario band came and played yeah it was uh gavel yeah. Because Gavel did the Sherbrooke show the next day as well. Yeah. And so it was those three. And Freezer. Was Burn. Crosscheck on that? No. Crosscheck played Sherbrooke, but the Montreal show is with Freezer Burn. Right, 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 right. Um, Seb jumped off of the... I showed up late. The band from France was already on. Um... Seb jumped off of the, you know, that like big ass box next to the stage at Fouffe's in the cabaret part. It's the, like the subwoofer. He jumped off of that on like, and I just see this fucking flying <laughs> being above me. And I was like, oh, God damn it. This fucking guy. And he I like, that. he just like, Basically, everyone else got out of the way, and it was just me standing there, like, uh, huh? <laughs> I was like, God damn it. But I got him back, so it's fine. Yeah. I think he jumped, he was trying to jump onto Ryan. Probably. Because, which is hard, because Ryan's a tall. Yeah. Like, I just man. like, Seb is just so hard bodied. Like when he slams into you, when he's doing the side to side, it like, man, it's like I've been shot. It hurts. Oh, like I'm taking damage. Yeah. But yeah, it's, like it's three hit it's, points it's per three hit points per, uh, per body. Yeah. yeah. Per side to side. Like Damn. it's, it's brutal. <laughs> and I'm like, man, like you get all off kilter and you're like, ah, Yeah. Was Deadbolt doing? Was good time. What, what do you mean? What are y'all? What are you, what, what are y'all's plans? You released the the self titled. We we did the release show. What's yeah. next? What's happening? Um, we're doing. I don't know. We're doing a December show in another kind of like unconventional venue. I think we're just kind of trying to do weird stuff like okay. you know just to do random little things here and there um destiny is organizing something in january mm -hmm. um and gonna try to find someone to press some vinyl for the ep but i honestly don't know if that's gonna happen We'll probably make more cassettes at this point. Like, do it easy. Yeah. Because Cheap. it's cheap. Yeah. Like, all the tapes we made were like recycled. Mm -hmm. So they sound pretty bad, probably. I haven't even listened to one yet. But... I'll never know. I don't have a tape player. Yeah. Yeah. I have so many tapes and no tape. Player. Yeah. First lyric insert, though. Like, I, d I don't know. I'm always like, kind of like, I don't know if people want to read the lyrics online or if I want them online. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, eh, I don't know. Just put them on spot. I feel like my vocal style is audible enough. <laughs> you know? 
Like, you can kind of tell what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I try to enunciate enough. I don't know. But, but then if you don't put the lyrics, nobody can do uh, Deadbolt Karaoke. True. I do need that in yeah. my life. Yeah. I need, I need, I need the help sometimes. It's the next TikTok trend. Um, oh, God. Deadbolt Karaoke. We had the two stepping in public places. Now we'll do. Oh my God. We'll do uh, karaoke for hardcore. I'm so glad that, like, that stuff hasn't. Like, I'm not on, like, hardcore TikTok or anything. Like, that stuff doesn't come up on my feed. And I'm. It's better that way, I think. I would just start leaving too many mean comments. <laughs> It's just whack. Why are your legs going up so high? <laughs> like critiquing form yeah. on the for you page. Nice spin kick for a sixty-year-old. What? It's like comment, like just mean comments. <laughs> My grandma stage dives better. My classic Yo. insults. Uh, well, Julia, this has been yes. wonderful. This has been a great time. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I have thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. I feel like I just said a bunch of nonsense this whole time, but no, appreciate it, was, it, fam. it. It's been good. It's been a fun one. Uh, I have one last question for you before we yes. wrap it up. What's your mm -hmm. favorite city for beans and breakdowns? Uh, for beans, Montreal, hmm. hands down. Uh, there's so many roasters. There's Too so many. many, there's so many cafes and just like really talented people working in coffee here. And that I think that, I think that we really got it going on, you know, like tourists will go out of their way to go to coffee roasters in Montreal. Mm -hmm. Um, because like, I don't know, it's like, there's a reputation for it. And I think that that's really cool. Um, at least like within the coffee world, I feel like Montreal like ranks high. Mm -hmm. Um, and then for breakdowns, it's gotta be New York. Like, I don't know. I'm a nerd. I like listening to eighties New York stuff and I just haven't found another place that hits so consistently, you know? It's the water. It's gotta yeah. Be. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, like, I'm a war zone girly, you know? <laughs> Went to get the war zone women. Didn't Word. you? Uh, <laughs> did, didn't you? Uh, didn't y'all do a biohazard cover? Yes. That was sick. Yeah. I wish we could do that again. I love, yeah. Urban Discipline is just like a perfect album. Like, also. Like, the rapping is like Bring so back, good. Can we, I know Gridiron is that, that's the, they do a thing. Yeah. Um, can we, <laughs> I feel like we need a, as well as youth crew revival, we need another rap core revival. Yeah. Yes. But like, like I don't want a bunch of like, you know, suburban white dudes <laughs> just fucking <laughs> rapping. We need to mix this shit up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like machine gun Kelly fucking rap core. We don't want that shit. Yeah. It's funny because like I, I definitely like write my lyrics based off of the method that I saw Nicki Minaj use, where she will plan out the syllables that she's using first. So the flow is good. And then she puts words on top. So it's like the rhythm of the words on the instrumental. So she'll be like, but da ba da ba ba da ba da ba 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 da 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 da
And then she puts words on it afterwards, which I think is like so much like, I think it works better for like flow and like Mm -hmm. lyricism when you approach it as like, you're another percussive instrument, you know? I mean, yeah, like naturally that does actually feel better. I like, I was thinking about it and I do actually, sometimes yeah. I'll get a line, like I'll get a line yeah. and I hear like a riff and I'm like, oh yeah, that's yeah. like the line with the words. But then yeah. a lot of times it's like, I hear something here, but I don't know the words, but like, I feel like it's like, blah, 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 blah. like, you yeah. know. It should Especially be like this kind of rhythm and then the, you add words flow, on yeah. top that like works with whatever you're writing about or whatever. And it's like the same thing with like, like on the, on the EP, like read, like writing, um, I hear you knocking and, um, waste management they were so instrumentally they were so all over the place that i was like i don't know what the fuck i'm gonna say over this and it took me like a long time like over over two months i i want to say to like even find a single line to write for those Mm -hmm. but i think that's just like it's just how like you need to find that groove in it and uh yeah julia again thank you so much for doing this episode thank you for having me i i do like to talk about beans and breakdowns so yeah it's perfect yeah um all right we gotta wrap this up thank you so much (laughs) Uh, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your Saturday. I'm sure I'll, I'll be seeing you. you on a show soon. So, Yes. Till next time. Later. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Beans and Breakdowns. I want to say a huge thanks to Julia once again for hanging out on the podcast. Be sure to check out the self-titled EP from Deadbolt available on all streaming platforms. Spend that shit, show some love to the homies. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. You can find out more information about the podcast by following us on Instagram at Beans and Breakdowns or on the web at beansandbreakdowns.com. Until next week, be sure to stay caffeinated and wake the fuck up.